usually when I go pond hopping. Uh, the the gear I use is it's more travel type. So uh, here, here's a little gear review. Uh, here in this bag, uh, I've got a breakdown travel rod for spinning and a breakdown travel rod for bait casting. I think I'm probably just going to go with spinning today again because I'm trying out some lighter baits and uh, just working things really slow. Also because it's it's winter uh, and and I feel like the lighter bite might be more productive than any of the um, heavier lures. So we'll give it a shot. Um, reel I'll be using is the uh, Stratic, uh, Stratic 3000, the uh, HGFK. I love that Agane system. Uh, I got on there a 20 pound suffix 832. I'll be using an eight pound fluorocarbon leader. And like I said, um, I'm going to be fishing uh, with the new shadow wraps. I picked up a bunch. I don't know what color I should use though. Uh, it looks good. That's uh, It's called Gone. I don't know. What else we got? This one's called the uh, Ghost Shiner. Looks pretty good. This one is the uh, Blue Ghost. Uh, I'm still trying to think which one, what color to use. Uh, this is this is clown. This is probably going to be my favorite one for river fishing, for walleyes and hybrids and different things. I can't wait to try that guy out. I got two more. This is the Elite Blue. That looks great. We got some lakes up in uh, Wisconsin that are going to be. That's a killer on. And then finally, uh, we got Carbon. Love that color for the shadow wrap, but. These are the Shadow Shads, and supposedly they have really good action. I think I'm going to go with, uh, you know what, I think I'm going to go with this. It's got the purple, uh, it's the Gone, looks really good here on that side. I'll give that color a shot, and uh, again we'll go with the spinning rod travel. Later we can do a gear review on some of the stuff I'm using, but uh, let's go out there and see what we got. Ooh, there's one. Hey, hey, hey. first bass. <laughs> first bass of uh, 2016 in open water. And if you look, that's what he hit, the, uh, the gone shadow shad. Holy cow, he didn't even look like he wanted to bite it. I saw him come up for it. All right. Finally on the board for 2016. Nice little, I don't know, little half pound fish. But hey. Fish is a fish. Let's go. Um, with the with the shadow shad, it rises a lot more quickly than I actually thought it would be. So the the tricky part is because the water is so cold, you can't fish it too quickly. Uh, and so actually with the shadow shad, it's not doing so well. I did catch that one bass as you guys saw, but uh, the problem is uh, because you in in the cold water, you got to fish a jerk it really slow. Um, and actually this one rises a little bit too quickly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm still going to fish with it. I'm going to give it a shot since it already caught me a fish. But I'm going to set up another rod. I pulled out the uh, another travel rod that I had. Uh, I'm going to throw that. And I'm actually going to uh, put on its bigger brother, the Shadow uh, shadow Wrap. Because uh, it's a longer jerk bait. And it actually doesn't really uh, rise up. It, it suspends uh, nose down. So hopefully it stays in the water column a little bit better. We'll give that a shot and we'll see how it goes. So far one fish on the shadow shad, nothing on the shadow wrap, but my gut feeling is that honestly, the shadow wrap is what's going to be the ticket by the time I'm done fishing. Oh, there it is, there it is, there it is. Oh, <laughs> oh what is it? It's a big crappie, I think. 
It is. Holy cow. Take a look at this crop, you guys. Oh my gosh. <laughs> look at that beautiful crop right there. Whoa. Nice. Again, the shadow wrap staying in the water column. A lot better. That's a nice copy for a small pond like this. Say bye to this guy. Man. I wish I had that. Whatever that was, it just it cracked it. It hit up so hard. There it is. There's one. Ooh, it feels good. Feels like a good one. Ah! Oh, it's a good one. Yo, guys, this is a really good fish. Oh, he's barely hooked. Barely hooked. Alright, we're gonna have to... Got some energy. I think he got hooked on top of the head. No, he's he's hooked on the lip, but but uh, he also got it from the head. Come here, buddy. We can get you free. There you go. <laughs> nice one on the shadow shad. I am loving this lure. One thing I like about these these shadow shadow wraps and shadow shads uh, that balance when you throw it out it, it really you can get it out pretty well. Oh, there's another one. There's another good one. Oh, this is that trout. It's a trout. It's definitely a trout, guys. It's a trout. The way I could tell by the way it's spinning and fighting like that. Oh, I might want to. There it is. Look at this. Beautiful. On the shadow shed. Nice. Let's get this guy. Beautiful fish right here. Oh, he got that good. Alright, I gotta find my pliers, so I'm gonna pause this video. <laughs> I think I just lost my, my bait, guys. I literally just lost. I got bit off. I just got bit off. Mother F. Just got one. On that pause. It's a trout. I guess trout like shadow shads. <laughs> I literally paused it and just left it. And that's when he hit it. <sighs> nice fish. Beautiful looking fish there. Here's another species. <laughs> Shadow shad and its multi-species. We got here. <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. Relax, buddy. 
small northern on the shadow shed. It's a cool pond, man. What up guys, this is the final part of the video. This is actually just uh, the review on the actual lure itself. It's a gear review that usually at the end of the videos I want to kind of focus on explaining what I learned about the lure and talk about uh, just some initial thoughts on how it performed. So this was for the Shadow Wrap Shad. Can't wait to use that color on the walleyes coming out. But um, overall thoughts, I thought this lure was amazing to be honest with you. Uh, back in January, uh, I went with Bass Pro Shops to Fishing University, uh, had the opportunity, the privilege to actually get out there and uh, we actually field tested these guys all the way back in January before it was released. So I knew it was coming out, but uh, just, you know, it was in a swimming pool and I wanted to see how it worked on the fish and actually if you want to see a link right here, uh, you can take a look at that video if you want to know what Fishing University is all about and you can see us, uh, there's a small segment where we're field testing the Rapala lures. but. Um, uh, going past that, uh, just the, the lure itself, um, the, the fatter body, the higher back, and the, the shorter length really allowed it to, to wiggle and dart and, and kind of shimmy <laughs> in ways that honestly, uh, not just replicate the shadow, uh, the shadow wrap that came out last year, but in some applications I really think it can exceed it. Um, some things that I did learn was uh, with the water being so cold here in Chicago, again the ice just melted. Um, you have to work your, your jerk baits. It's jerk bait time, uh, and you have to work them really slow. Uh, so if you're fishing anywhere from you know seven to ten feet, and again I was just pond hopping, so that's not even a, a real you know deep area. But for pond, it's it's pretty you know pretty deep. Uh, but the problem that I had with this was because one of the key features of this lure is that it after it gets down to the the desired um, water column, it kind of just suspends for a second, and then it goes nose up like a dying minnow. Uh, and it begins to float ever so slowly to the, you know, uh, towards the, the top of the water. And uh, that's an awesome feature, but the thing is when you're fishing in cold water, uh, you actually need to stay down in that water column where the strike zone is. And so the only way I can get it down there is if I worked it a lot faster, uh, which actually isn't that great when you're fishing jerk baits in cold water. So that's where actually the shadow wrap is something that I would really consider using uh, because uh, when you get the shadow wrap down to that desired water depth, it actually just suspends there and hangs out there and actually nose down just kind of chills out there and so that was the major difference that I found between these two but uh, you know honestly where this did shine was when I was in the shallower areas I'm talking like three uh, to four feet uh, in these ponds uh, I could work it fairly quickly and it really didn't matter because it was right in that you know three foot depth where they were just crushing it and so uh, it was more of the action and the wiggle that was just you know just amazing and and definitely triggered the fish a uh, bunch of different species. I know that this can catch. You guys saw in the video. Uh, we got pike. We got a bunch of trout and uh, quite a few largemouth bass. And so that was actually just uh, my quick thoughts on the shadow wrap shad. Uh, it's it's as good as advertised, and I can't wait to get it out in the water again. I hope that you like this video, guys. Um, please uh, share with me any comments that you might have, any questions that you might have. I'm pretty sure I can't answer all of them, but hopefully um, other guys will tune in and chime in and we'll be able to get something going together. That is it for this video. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, hit the like, comment, and subscribe button. And that is your Shadow Wrap Shack. Peace.